welcome back to the NPTEL online certification course on Macroelectronics Devices Circuits. In our previous uh, lecture, we had understood the basic structure and the doping profile of a BJT. We have also understood two types of BJT which is available to us. One is known as NPN, another is known as PNP. In the first case which is NPN, electron is the majority current carriers. So in the second case, hole are the majority current carriers. What we will learn in this module or in this lecture is uh, the working principles of uh, BJT, right? Uh, and we will see why is it therefore termed as a bipolar technology. Uh, Let us maybe, uh, it will be easy if we start with an NPN transistor and then we can uh, take, up, take up the case of a PNP transistor. So, before we move forward and we discussed about NPN and PNP transistors, uh, let us uh, let's just recapitulate what we know about a PN junction or an N, uh, a PN junction diode or simple PN junction, right. So, if you have a P type material and an N type material here and you do not apply any bias, let us suppose the bias is 0. So, I am just keeping it open circuit here. So, V B is equals to 0, then what will happen is that free electrons of from here will be jumping to this place, they will be diffusing, right, because there will be diffusion at this place. Why there will be diffusion? Because you have a large free electron concentration here and you have got very low free electron concentration here. Therefore, electrons will be jumping from N side to P side. As a result, what will happen is on the N side, you will be left with what? Positive ions, which are nothing but your donor species. And what happens on the on the on the p side? These electrons will recombine with holes, and they, you will have negative charges. Effective negative charges will be available to you, right? So, what is the big picture? Therefore, that even if you don't apply any bias, because of a diffusion between p-type and n-type material, you will have a region near its junction. This is known as this is known as metallurgical junction, right? Please understand. This is known as a metallurgical junction. This this junction, PN junction, is basically known as a metallurgical junction. If you look at this junction, uh, so initially, therefore, what will happen is that electrons will be moving, and this this side you will have fixed charges which are positive in nature, and you will have fixed charges which are negative in nature. Why? Because electrons have left from the from the negative side. As they went, they left behind their uh, donor atoms there and therefore, you will have uh, you will have this positive charge. So, what happens is that there will be electric field which will be directed from N side to P side inside this region, right. First of all therefore, this region which you see this region is referred to as the depletion region, fine. So, this is the depletion region. So, why it is known as a depletion region? Because this is the region uh, which is basically depleted of any free charge carriers. So, please understand there are charges, but these are not fixed, these are not free charges, they are fixed charges, right. Why fixed charges? Because electrons have left their position leaving their the donor atoms, ionized donor atom. So, if I have a donor atom N d, right, it, it gives one electron and it converts itself to N d plus, right, accepted atom, right gives one holes there and becomes a negative uh, atom available to us. Now, so, so, so the idea therefore, is that since this is and therefore, this region which you, which you see in front of you, this region is primarily devoid of any free charge carriers and therefore, it is known as a depletion region, which means that under 0, even under 0 bias condition, the p n junction is basically having a depletion width, which is w let us suppose, right this will always be there you like it or not at even at zero bias there will be there will be the junction will be deployed or de devoid of any free charge carriers now why after sometimes this movement stops for a free electron from n type to p type see so so what is happening is therefore for electron to move from n type material to p type material now it has to cross this depletion region agreed but as just as it enters this depletion region, it sees an electric field which is directed this side, which means that because if you remember, it is minus E into E, right? We, negative Y minus because electron is in is a negative charge. Therefore, the force on the electron is minus E into E, and therefore, electron trying to enter this side will be pushed back on this side, right? 
So, beyond a particular time when the electric field becomes so large that any extra electron coming from n type and trying to enter into the depletion width to go towards the p side will be pushed by the electric field within the depletion region and force it to move outside the depletion region and throw it towards the n side. So, what is the overall picture therefore, what we get that overall picture therefore, is under 0 bias condition your there will be a fixed width of a p n junction and that fixed width is basically my depletion width w right and therefore, this will be devoid of any this part will be devoid of any free charge carriers right if this is a p n junction diode and we apply, have not applied a bias here. Now, let us see what will happen if we forward bias this p n junction as we as we very well know forward bias basically means that the p type is connected to a positive terminal and the n type is connected to negative terminal right. Let us look from the n type material. Now, what will happen is that or from the p type material either way you can have a look uh, from the p type material. So, if you if you if you if you have a positive uh, po po polarity battery connected to the p type material here the holes which are majority current carriers here will see an electric field in this direction because this is positive and this is negative. So, there will be electric field. So, these holes will be pushed towards this region right will be pushed similarly electrons will be pushed in this region right they will be pushed near the depletion edge as it as it enters. So, please understand within the depletion region the electric field is in this direction. So, I will make the highlighted pen slightly change the color. So, that you are able to appreciate what I am trying to say the electric field within the within the uh, depletion region is in this direction whereas, outside it is this this one right this is the direction. Therefore, once a hole enters a depletion region let us suppose is the hole it enters the depletion region by virtue of this electric field it will be again thrown it will be at least these these electric fields which are marked in blue will try to throw the hole towards the p side and any electron entering from n side will be thrown towards n side. But now please understand you have an external bias which is say v v b e let us suppose base emitter or whatever v b e or v x e whatever which will help the holes and electrons to cross this barrier right. So, so if so if I am able to see that so so extra el electrons will be crossing this barrier or extra holes will be crossing this barrier and once it reaches on this side right it tries to remove some of the electrons available here and therefore what happens uh, similarly electrons moving from this side to this side as 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 it as it starts to move the the depletion width actually therefore starts to reduce right. So, as you as you make the pH junction more and more forward bias your depletion width starts to become lower and lower this can be also understood in this manner. So, if you look at the depletion width it primarily means that the holes has to acquire an extra energy to cross this barrier. So, for an hole it is basically a barrier right. So, if you are able to provide a bias which is VBE what what it happens to the hole is that it lowers the effective barrier drastically. So, this was the initial barrier length now this is becomes the initial barrier now it is easier for holes to cross the barrier right. So, so we should look at in this manner. So, we come to one major conclusion out of it is that when your p n junction is forward biased right the depletion width depletion width will reduce reduce a time might come when the depletion width will go to 0 and you will have some current flowing because of the external bias for V b not equals to 0. So, there will be some current not equals to 0 for V b not equals to 0. This is the condition when you do a forward this is known as forward bias. Now, let us look at the fact what will happen if you go to reverse bias which means that you just convert this whole thing and and maybe maybe the next I can help in this slide that let me say I have this and I have got this of p n I had a depletion region already formed now I had connect p type to a negative side and n side to a positive side. So, I just reverse the polarity of the battery right. Now, I leave an exercise to you to, to, to and you can easily appreciate what will happen now is that this depletion width which was initially this to this will now become larger will become larger will become the new value of depletion width will be this one which means that under reverse bias condition reverse bias condition 
the depletion width depletion width increases width increases right and as a result the current will be further lowered or there will be no current flow so please understand therefore in a so from a basic study of pn junction uh, diode theory or pn junction theory when you forward bias a junction more is the current when you reverse bias a junction less is the current why because the forward bias will give you a lower depletion width a reverse bias will give you a uh, will give you a higher depletion width with this knowledge you have gained as far as a simple pn junction is uh, is there let me come back to the npn transistor and explain to you uh, how a npn transistor works so look at the fact what let, let us remember our previous uh, lectures uh, basic principles that the emitter will have a very heavily doped and that do, uh, your your holes will your your uh, base will be relatively very less doped it will be very thin also and your collector will be relatively heavily uh, relatively less doped uh, but it will be the same same doping as that of the emitter so this is an npn if you look very carefully this is n n type semiconductor this is again an n type semiconductor and this p type semiconductor and what we have done is we have we have forward biased we have forward biased the base emitter junction and what we have also done is we have reversed bias the base collector junction right this is just for information at this stage this is also known as the active mode of operation we'll discuss that in subsequent slides but just to give you a functionality of this npn transistor uh, we forward bias the base emitter and reverse bias the base collector and see how the current flows if you look very carefully there for when you forward bias the base correct base emitter junction right you reduce the depletion width on the base emitter junction region as we discussed just now just few minutes back right and you reduce it when you reduce it you force large number of electrons from the emitter side from the emitter side right and they will be injected onto the base side so this is the injected electron which is flowing right because you have forward biased n and p junction here right as it enters the base region this is where the critical aspect of a bipolar technology works a bipolar junction transistor works as it enters the de depletion region here right please understand the, the base region is typically very having very small number of holes because it's slowly doped and it's very thin so what will happen is majority of the electrons will actually cross the base very fast because it's very high velocity but some of the electrons will actually combine with some of the holes present here so there will be an electron hole recombination right and there will be a so the holes will be lost because electrons will eat into the holes and as the holes will be lost right in order to make the same number of holes as it was previously you see there will be a current which is known as ib which will be flowing into the base so please understand these blue colored uh, blue colored uh, current sources which we are showing showing to you is basically the conventional current these are not electronic current right so therefore therefore if you look at the base here which is this one if you look at the base here then in the base the direction of the current is basically into the base and the reason why is it into the base is that the holes are now so let us suppose 10 electrons recombine with 10 holes so 10 holes were lost in order to therefore make again the 10 holes available to me 10 holes from the base side which is being fed by vbe what vbe this vbe will enter into the base side and therefore the blue colored arrow is going inside the base right and this is the base current very very small current because why base current is very very small because the number of holes are very very small right so the probability of uh, recombination is also very very small and therefore i would not expect large base current to be available to me now what has happened therefore is those those electrons which didn't recombine they went and towards the uh, towards the uh, base collector uh, base collector junction but please understand base collector was reversed bias right so what what does when it, when the electron comes here what does it sees it sees a negative potential here sorry it sees a positive potential here i'm sorry because of this vcb and therefore they will rush through the depletion region right and go towards the collector side 
if there would not have been a, any positive charge here or positive potential here, electron could not have crossed the base collector barrier, because base collector barrier please understand is large as compared to base emitter, because it is reverse bias. Right. So, if, if there would not have been any positive potential near the collector end, I would not expect it to see the electrons to cross the barrier, because you are not providing that much amount of energy to electrons to cross the barrier. And as a result what will happen electron would not flow, but since you have provided a VCB a very large potential as compared to VBE and that to reverse bias in the base collector, the electrons will see a very large potential on the collector side and as a result what will happen, it will force itself through the depletion region and reach the collector side. right? And as a result there will be a collector current, as you can see it is again pointing inwards, why pointing inwards? You very well understand why is it pointing inwards, because electrons are moving outwards, therefore whole current is moving inwards. So, I have IB inwards, IC inwards and IE also moving outwards, right? IE outwards because electron current is moving inwards, <coughs> right? So, this is what basic structure of, of, of uh, base current looks uh, or the basic idea looks like. Now, if you look at another, uh, another uh, issue here, which is quite an interesting issue is uh, that uh, when you apply a VBE base emitter, you are basically forward biasing this base, uh, base emitter junction, right? Base emitter junction, you are forward biasing it. Now, uh, now when you are forward biasing it, you are also reducing the uh, width of the emitter base junction layer, as, as we have already discussed this point. So, just as it is easier for electron to move towards the base side, it is also easy for the holes to move from base to electro uh, towards end side. So, you see you will also have one current contribution because of injected hole from the base side. right? So, so you have injected electrons, this is primarily diffusion and then you have drift and these are injected holes from base towards the collector side. However, as I B 1, I B 1 will be very, very small because as I discussed with you small base current is there and therefore, I B 1 will be relatively very small uh, which is there with you. right? So, I have three currents therefore, I E which is which is here right, I B and I C and therefore, by Kirchhoff's current law I E will be equals to I B plus I C right and obviously, V C B should be much larger than V B E. Right? And this is the basic fundamental working that which means that if 100 electrons started from emitter, then maybe 90 electrons reach towards the collector, 10 were recombined on the base and therefore, by changing the biasing of the base emitter junction, I can change the total amount of current flowing through the collector side. Right? I can also therefore, change the collector current by changing the base current because I equals to I B plus I C. So, if I if I want to make I C larger, I reduce my I B because I is fixed, right. So, changing one current by, by so uh, or, 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 or getting the final current high or low by changing one of the parameters of the other current is the prime example of a BJT, right. So, this is the basic example of a BJT which I just wanted to give you an idea. The same concept, the same thing, exactly the same thing can be applied to holes also. Only in this case, the biasing of the battery will change and this is therefore, forward biasing it because it is P and N type and this is V B C again reverse biasing it. Understanding part is exactly the same as the previous case. So, I am not going to details of this you please work it out yourself from the book or you can yourself do it, it is pretty easy and pretty simple to understand. The concept remains the same that base emitter will be still forward biased, depletion width will be small, base collector will be reversed biased, it will be still large and so on and so forth. Uh, in this case, uh, since the base is made up of n type material, the recombination on the base side will be relatively small and therefore, the base current will be relatively very small right. And as in the, in the second case, uh, uh, as you increase the value of V B C or V E B, you will actually able to control the current flowing through the collector side. So, these are the few important uh, aspects uh, which one should be able to handle as far as this is concerned. Now, therefore, uh, the various modes of operations are uh, uh, are uh, given as uh, th these are the various modes of operation, right? Depending upon the bias condition, very simple, straightforward. How you bi so there are two bi so there are two biases, right? So I can have two to the power two. So I can have four sort of uh, four sort of uh, modes, right? Is it okay? Why? 
because there are two bias conditions right and I can therefore, have uh, and, and each one of them can be reversed right because why two, two biases two battery sources and each battery source can be either forward biased or reversed bias. So, I can have therefore, four conditions available to me forward 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 reverse right reverse reverse and reverse forward. So, each one of them will give rise to a each uh, each methodology we will come to it uh, one by one and we will see how it works out. I think it you, you, you can appreciate these points. The first thing is if both emitter base junction this is EBJ and CBJ is the collector base junction. So, if EBJ is reversed and CBJ is reversed then of course, you can understand it will be cut off why? Why it will be cut off the reason being if both are reversed bias then emitter base junction depletion width is also very large right. And collector base junction width is also very large both the widths are very large. So, there is no question or no probability of any electron coming from the emitter side and entering into the base side right and therefore, there will be very very small current or almost 0 current in the in the region right. Then we define that to be as a cutoff right why cutoff because you are applying a bias, but you are not getting any output current then we define that to be as the cutoff uh, cutoff uh, mode of operation. I just want missed one small point in the previous discussion which I will just take care of it by this understanding and that is uh, that is something like this. See in an n type semiconductor which you see in front of you this one n type electrons are the majority carriers right this we have already seen uh, majority carriers, but we forgot one small thing that the holes are also there, but these are minority very small in numbers. So, on the emitter side you will have electrons as well as holes electrons will be very large in number and therefore, we were discussing the current flow in a BJT from any electron point of view, but there will be also holes available here please keep this in mind. But for example, in this case in this case for if, if, if even if there are few holes inside this n type semiconductor and you and you forward bias this emitter base junction which is available please understand for a minority current carrier it will not be a hill, but a slope why it will be a slope because this is emitter base junction. So, if it if it is an n it is a it is basically a p n junction no it is an n and p. So, this this is therefore, the electric the electric field uh, will be so, so if these are electrons electrically move this side and the electric field will be directed in this direction. So, any hole which entered somehow or other in the depletion region can be dragged. So, for hole it is not a big hump for hole it is basically a small slope. Similarly, electron on this side will be also a small slope as you move. So, please understand though majority current carriers do not contribute to the current when both are cut off which means that when both V B E and V C B are reversed biased R B R B then we define it to be cut off. But please understand this is by virtue of the fact why we cut off because majority current carriers are very low or almost 0. But please understand there might be a current because of the minority current carrier because for minority current carrier it is not a hump, but a it is not a hill, but a hump going downwards right. But since that current is very very low uh, maybe 10 or 100 orders lower than the actual current. So, if you have milli ampere current flowing for the forward bias or on current this might be the order of micro ampere or much smaller than that we generally neglect that current and say that okay, the device is off. But please keep in mind that as a second order effect you generally have these currents uh, which are there with us uh, by virtue of minority current carriers they are always there right and that that makes our life slightly difficult. So, we have understood cut off. So, cut off is what when both my emitter base as well as collector base junctions are reverse biased and you therefore, understand why they are uh, why they are reverse biased. The second is basically my active mode of operation and this is the most actively used uh, mode of operation uh, generally used in amplifiers to a larger extent where your emitter base junction is forward biased, but your co base collector junction is reverse biased please understand the idea behind it. When you have emitter base junction forward biased you are allowing larger number of emitter atoms which is electrons uh, emitter free charge carriers to enter into the base region and collector region right. So, currents are very very large. So, and when you reverse bias the base collector region you actually allow large amount of you allow 
acceptance of large number of electrons from the emitter side right. So, therefore, in the active region emitter base is always forward biased and collector base is always reversed biased right. Let us look at reverse active, reverse active is when you just reverse these two. That means, your emitter base junction is now forward biased and your collector base junction is now uh, sorry your emitter base junction is now reverse biased which, which means that you do not allow large number of emitter currents to flow, but then you make your forward biased collector base junction right. The last one is saturation and that in which you case in which case both emitter as well as collector are forward biased. In this case you have a large amount of current which flows through the because both your collector base junction and emitter base junctions are forward biased. As a result you allow a large amount of current to flow. So, there are four modes of operation in general we will we, as we as we move off we will see that I can use transistor as a switch right wherein, wherein I can move from cutoff to active, active to saturation. I can also use transistor as an amplifier when I move from active to reverse active and so on and so forth. So, just by varying the biases right applied biases I can let it work sometime as a switch from on to off state and vice versa and I can let it also work as an amplifier. So, we will see as we move along what these operations are and how this uh, operation looks like right. Uh, we will not go into details of this one, but I will give you a brief idea about where we are at this stage. Now, <coughs> as I was discussing with you that there will be always minority current carriers which will be there apart from the majority current carriers in a particular region. Now, if you look at this plot which you see in front of you this plot, this is basically a profile of the minority carrier concentration in the base and the emitter of an NPN transistor. So, this is my emitter side right, this is my emitter 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 base depletion junction, this is the emitter base depletion junction, this is my base region and then this is my collector base depletion junction here. Now, so, your NPN transistor, so the base is basically P type right. So, what does it what does this graph show is that in ideal con condition the electrons concentration which electron is a basically a minority current carrier on the base side will fall linearly from NP0, NP0 if you look very carefully NP0 means electrons on the P side at 0 means this is 0, this is 0. So, from there it will be maximum because it is nearest to the emitter side and then it will fall to 0 near the base at the, at the emitter side. Why? Because at the collector side all the electrons are pulled by virtue of the reverse bias of the base collector junction. So, at the emitter side you have large number of minority current carriers because electrons are being fed from the emitter side. So, your NP0 is typically very high, but as you move towards the collector side since collector is drawing all the electrons away from it, I would expect to see per unit volume electron available there to be relatively very low right. So, that is the reason we see a linear almost a straight line drop of electron concentration from a very high value to almost 0 value near the uh, near this thing, but in uh, but we will not go into details of it, but with recombination because actually this is with the assumption that this is the only recombination, if this is a recombination it is almost a parabolic sort of a non-linear profile which you see in front of you, not at this stage not very important from the point of view of understanding the physics of the device, but please understand two things that the doping concentration of my minority current carrier, minority current carrier in the base region is a function of my width effective base width and so on and so forth. So, this is what the effective base width looks like, uh, maybe in the next turn when we come back we will discuss about uh, the various concentration electron diffusion current and so on and so forth. Uh, what we have done till, uh, till, till in today's lecture is uh, given you an idea about uh, how the minority current carrier behave in a p type base region right. We also have come to the point uh, uh, how we have uh, how a p n junction works and therefore, how it can be translated into an NP and a PNP transistor and uh, its functionalities right. So, we have understood all these things when we meet tomorrow or next time when we meet the I will be discussing some mathematics about the about the current flow in a in a in a in a transistor which is carried of both drift and diffusion and then see how we can optimize the functioning of an NP and a PNP BJT. So, this is what we have learned today and we will hope that uh, you have understood a part of this work uh, as far as this course is concerned. Thank you very much.